Is this still the city of love? This improv story is based on the idea a man finds somebody hiding in his house like the story commence. Craig was having his breakfast and he heard a... heard a sound. Who's that? Was that next door? Um, so he went back to his breakfast and he went to have a drink, right? And he heard this. I am fuck. Is that what? And he looked at his he looked at his drink that he was drinking. He looked at his drink, and uh, he was an alcoholic, right? So he had a wee bit of whiskey and his coffee that morning, and he went like that. and put it down you know the way an alcoholic in a film does that when they see something he would have chucked it at his shudder but it was his hus. so he decided he stopped drinking right there so that's it I was going to say no longer an alcoholic but a recovering alcoholic Um. But then, even though he had stopped drinking, he heard this. Oh, yeah, bastard. Fuck. Again. He's like, right, what is that? And he went, hello? Is there anyone there? And he's in the fucking house. What a stupid thing to say. And, and, uh, and here's something stupid. You hear this? I oh, oh fuck! And Craig ran out his kitchen and found in he like he's like where is it? Looked in every fucking room, and actually, it was in his bedroom. He could smell a fart, but he was the only person that was in. He hadn't farted recently. Somebody has farted in here, and he looked under his bed. And there was a fucking guy. There was a guy. And Craig went, you didn't mean to say I didn't you know, when I said, is anybody there? And the guy came out and went, let help us out first, I'll tell you everything. And he helped the guy out, and the guy said, no, no, I just, um, I just sort of fucked it up there. And Craig went, right, so what's this all about? By the way, it was you that farted, wasn't it? And he went, aye, aye. And Craig said, so what's this all about then? What's going on here? And the guy said, I have been hiding in your house for about two days now. And Craig said, but why? None of this makes sense. And the guy said, do you recognise me? And Craig went, no. And the guy said, that's because you're a heavy drinker and you forget. And Craig went, what's going on here? And the guy said, I came round two days ago to try and sell you um, a better a better internet, you know, faster faster connection, try to sell, uh, sell you BT fibre. Um, and I came in to check, you're with Virgin Media, and I sort of checked to see if you got, you know, the right box and all the rest of it. Right? I think, I used to do, I do actually think I remember that. So did, did I swap? We didn't get around to any of that. I came in, and then you shut the door. And you locked the door. But I don't think you meant to do it. I think you just because cause you, you had a swally. Um, and then I was going to come through. I checked, by the way, you can swap. You've got the right stuff there. And I was going to come through to the kitchen and say, that's me, pal. That's me. Um, you know, it kind of get let out but I heard you sort of talking to yourself you, you sound kind of angry the way some sometimes when somebody's drunk is and I thought I might leave it for a wee minute and a minute became an hour you know I kind of waited in the living room waiting for you to come through for me to tell you you, you sounded like you're kind of on the phone as well I wasn't sure if there's also somebody through in the kitchen there but you sounded that I didn't want to break you know come into an argument um 
So I just went, right, I just decided to kind of, it went all the way to that night and I thought, well, I'll just hide under the bed until it's time. But basically the longer the time went on, the more I thought it's going to be weird if I reveal myself. So I've just been kind of um, keeping my head in until the time was right, until you opened the door. But every time I've went to open the door, you've been there and just... And Craig went, I feel fucking terrible. By the way, I've stopped drinking. And the guy went, really? Congratulations, mate. How long's that been now? Um, about a couple of minutes. What about yourself? Knocked on the head seven years ago, mate. Seven years? What's it like? It's, it's got ups and downs, we but bothered. I mean, a few, a few a, almost uh, wee relapses here and there, but the main thing's the boredom, I'd say. Right, Craig went like that, right, right, right. What are we talking about? Um, the relapses, relapses what? We're talking about drinking. I see, I can't remember, my head's fucked. See, I, I had a drink this morning, my head, I'm still, I'm still a wee bit off cut and I've been drinking solid for about uh, 10 years now. So who are you again? I'm sorry, who are you? And the guy took that opportunity to to go like that. Craig, Craig's, this guy's fucking steaming, he doesn't know anything. And he said, um, I'm, I'm in to collect the debt. And Craig went, what debt? I have not any debt. And the guy went, right, so you don't, you don't remember. And Craig looked at his uniform and it said BT. Oh, BT money, I'm with Virgin, I think. And the guy said, no, you switched to BT. Do you not remember? No, I don't. I've not, I've not, let me go and check. Well, look, mate, look. BT, British Telecom. Craig went, so how, what, I, I have to pay you, what, 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 what is it you want? And the guy said, uh, 80, 80 quid, 80. 80, I don't know if I've got that in cash. What have you got? Just whatever you've got. In fact, he's that. And it was um, a watch, a gold watch Craig was wearing. Geez that. Craig went, fucking all right. And he went like that. Geez that. And it was a, a clock on the wall, another timepiece. A clock on the wall that looked like it cost a bit of money. It was like marble and baby gold bits and that. And, and then, because you always do things in threes, the guy went like that. And uh, Geezer Jacket. He'd always wanted to do that. Geezer Jacket. Craig wasn't wearing a jacket. And he told him that. He said, no, the one you're fucking, geezer any jacket. And geezer it now, you're getting fucking slashed. Craig went upstairs and came down with a few jackets, a suit jacket, and a kind of like kind of normal sort of jacket you'd wear out. It's like a North Face sort of thing. And the guy took both of them, and the clock, and the watch. The clock was quite big, so the guy used one of the jackets as a kind of like you know robber's sack, like that. Wrapped it up like that. And you know what this fucking bastard did? Craig, Craig was like, Craig opened the door and went, right, sorry, I'll see you later. The guy, so it was the guy out, right? That's it over. That's the guy out. Fucking robbed him. Um, guy's obviously full of, you know, Craig's obviously had uh, got a, a fucking a drink problem. Um, you know what this fucking bastard does? See if, you can, see if you can guess. He's got he's got the stuff and the door's open. He can just go. You know what he does anyway? Go guess. Then he stab him. No, then he stab him. No, stab. Slash him. <laughs> he fucking slashed him. For fuck's sake, you've got the fucking stuff. The door's open. That you want to get out. He fucking slashed him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I 
slashed him on his way out and walked away laughing like that. <laughs> You know what Craig said? Because he was so low, that alcoholic low, he went, thank you, sir. Sorry, sir. And shut the door. Then he got to the hospital to get it stitched up. He was just ashamed. Um, and then a guy came along, a pal, a Craig, and said, what happened to you? This is like two weeks later. It's like, oh, fuck. You've got to get that sorted out, but they could only stitch it up so much. And his pal said, what what, what, what happened? And Craig said the whole lot. And he's never touching a drink again. And the pal persuaded Craig to go to the police. And he managed to catch the cunt. BT, easy to get the guy. Easy to find it. Who has been in this uh, the vicinity, that this address... Who's, who was on this, uh, you know, this this journey, this uh, on uh, this beat? Well, that would be this person that this person was going about. Right, right, we know who that is. Identity parade. Yeah, that, that's, I'm pretty sure that's it. He got his hair cut. The guy had sort of kind of long hair. Got his hair cut, you know, kind of shaved to try and, but he went like, no, it's him. Because it fucking, you know, clarify, the clarity, see if you get slashed, the adrenaline uh, wipes out the booze. So he completely remembered the guy's face. And like that, that's him there. Are you sure? Yep. A hundred percent? Yes. Write that down that he, he, uh, he pointed at uh, uh, suspect number two. Okay. And then after he went, how did I do? That guy got you've actually probably not just helped yourself here but you've prevented a lot of this happening this guy's probably gone about doing this all the time there's no there's not got any prior uh, convictions or anything but you probably this is probably just the beginning that's probably just the beginning i don't i don't know i, I feel kind of bad about it because it was just a kind of like a one-off and maybe okay i don't know no no that would have emboldened him and Bolden do dome. There's been a murder. That would have emboldened them. Emboldened them. Because he got away with it once, he'll just keep on doing it until he does get caught. You've done the right thing here. What's your name again? Craig. You've done the right thing here. The judge sentenced him to the maximum sentence for that crime which was 10 years. Five years you get for good behaviour. Right? So that's halved right away. And after a couple of years, he got moved to a low security prison, where it's basically a fucking holiday camp. Basically a holiday camp. It's basically Butlin's only good And uh, Craig, as part of a kind of therapy sort of thing, actually visited this bastard and said, I just want to know why. He said, the opportunity was there. I was nervous. Um, I'd, I don't know. I, I was in that, that much fear for about two days that it was good to turn the tables on you, even though, like, I don't know. I don't know. I still think about it, but I'm so sorry. I know you could never forgive me. And Craig went like that. In a really, really powerful moment, went like that. I forgive you. And Craig went, thank you. I mean, the other guy went, thank you. But then, just as Craig was about to leave, the guy said, right, well, I'll see you later. Uh, thanks for visiting. And thanks for forgiving me. And then, one of his inmate pals went like that. Hurry up! Hurry up! 
We've got to finish this game on our PlayStation. They were playing It Takes Two. And Craig went, what's that there? Oh, nothing. What's going on? And the guy went, it's nothing. It's a, a, a guy's, a guy's half he's not. He's half he's not. And Craig turned to one of the guards. What's this? And the, Craig, uh, the guard went like that. It's a joke, isn't it? And Craig went, what, what, what's going on? Oh, did you not know? I've got PlayStations a lot. Craig went, what? you got PlayStations. PS5s. The lot. And Craig went, you're fucking joking. This is meant to be a prison. This is meant to be somewhere where you don't want to be. And the guard went, I'm not allowed to say. I'm not allowed to say. I'll, I'll, lose, I'll lose. I'll get my arse felt. Lose my job. And Craig went like, here, I'll take care of it. I don't want you losing your job, mate. I've already lost mine because of that, because of the swally. Because I've got nothing to lose. Is it this cunt here? <laughs> Craig said that to the guard about the fucking inmate, you know, the, about, about the guy who actually slashed him. Is it this cunt here you're on about? And the guard went, Aye, the guy you were just meeting. Aye, is that him here? It's just how Craig liked to gear up for a fight. It's just something he learned when he was younger. Who is it? This one here, aye. This one here, aye. Is that him? This one here bothering you? This one here? The guard went, aye, the guy you were just speaking to. And Craig went like that, here. And pulled out a hawking knife like that. Because he was thinking, I'm either going to forgive him or kill him. And he just went like that, yeah. So see the nostrils, see that wee bit, the set, the thing in my bob, that fell down, and it was just a hole, one nostril, and he got taken away, the, the, the slasher, Craig didn't get done for it, he got, he got like half diminished responsibility, sort of, you know, stress and all the rest of it. But that, the guy that got uh, the nose cut, he had to have an operation, get it all sorted out. But basically, he had just one, one big nostril, and uh, the amount of fucking coke he got snorted in that fucking jail. By the way, uh, he ended up stabbing somebody, so he never, never got out deliberately. The amount of coke he got through my, with that gigantic nostril, it was like a fucking Hoover, and. Do you know who gave him the coke? Amnesty. Amnesty International said if you don't give him coke, well, that's, you know, that's a, that's a drug addiction. You need to give him his medicine. They supplied the coke and good fucking coke. No, it's just some shite. Good coke. Sort of stuff they've got like in fucking Miami. Good stuff. Unbelievable. And Craig went out one night to have some coke to cheer himself up and it was fucking shite. The end. Lotatron on go toboggan. CDL thinks the subs. You're welcome. To you and your boyfriend Goslin. That's a true story. Where did you hear this? Oh. Oh, I can tell you, I can tell you that was a true story. Do you remember I said that Craig had a pal that persuaded him to go to the police? That was me. This has been really, really painful to talk about. That was me. That was me. And there's nothing you can do. Do you know, I, I remember trying to take this to uh, get an appeal um, you know, I kind of, like, I kind of, an appeal to f to further extend the punishment on the guy. Not an appeal to get him off, but to actually, you know, p appeal, going to get him done even more. And uh, f I'm way BT. 
and my phone got my phone just noticed that my internet kept kept going off. That's why my that's why my connection keeps going off. It's them sending me warnings. Go like, don't fuck with the system. By the way, talking about don't fuck with the system. R.I.P. Ned Beatty. <laughs>